What's up guys and welcome to today's video. Today's episode is the final episode of the series where I have reviewed some of my older content and selected my current top exercises for each muscle group. Today's episode, we're gonna be summarizing all of the leg exercises. The reason behind that is because legs is not really that popular. No doubt this video will get the least amount of views out of all of them, but uh, it's very important for you to train legs. I'm sure you all know that by now. Why? First of all, you burn the most amount of calories when you train legs. And second of all, if you have more muscle mass in your lower body, you will naturally burn more calories on a day-to-day -day basis. It also separates the boys from the men. If you have a big set of legs, it just commands respect. So in this video, we are going to summarize the top three exercises for the quads, hamstrings, and the glutes. So we'll start off with quads. My number one go-to exercise would be the pendulum squat. Reason why this exercise is so good is because first of all, no matter how tight you are, no matter how restricted you are with your range of motion, this will allow you to get extremely good depth. Almost everybody can go all the way down the bottom of this machine you can get a good stretch on the quads second best quad exercise on my list would be the hack squat the reason i like this so much is again you can get pretty decent range of motion most of the hack squat machines which i have used i can go all the way down to the bottom and get a very good stretch and full range of motion when working the quad second of all hack squats have a back support so you're pretty much taking your entire back out of the equation which is great because it allows you to take your quads to failure without risking injuring your lower back or your lower back giving way first. The only downside to the hack squat when comparing it to the pendulum squat is that the top of the movement, there isn't a huge amount of resistance. So if you add bands to the hack squat, it makes it a hell of a lot more of an efficient exercise to do. The third exercise, I would probably go for some form of a heel elevated back squat or ideally front squat. If you can position yourself where the bar is in front of you resting on your shoulders whether you're holding it with your wrists stretched out or you're using the straps which I like to do this allows you to maintain an upright torso so keeping an upright torso heels elevated pushing your knees out in front of your foot means that your quads will go through again a greater range of motion and it just ensures that your lower back isn't being loaded up too much of course your spine is going to be working but when you're comparing it to a flat-footed back squat most people will be leaning forward quite a bit and there's a lot of tension which then would be placed on the lower back and onto the glutes two exercises which didn't quite make the cut the leg extension and the leg press this is very dependent upon the machines which you're using, but the majority of the time, most machines won't allow you to go through that full range of motion or get the quad into the lengthened position. I particularly found that with a lot of leg press machines. I just find they're pretty horrible for me. I feel like I'm only doing half reps and it's just nowhere near as efficient as the other three exercises which I've mentioned. Moving on to hamstrings, my number one go-to exercise would be the seated leg curl. Reason why this exercise is so good is first of all, your body's locked in position. You can't really cheat. The majority, if not all of the tension is placed onto your hamstrings. And the way that it's set up is you're sitting upright. It allows you to go through a very good range of motion where you can get a full stretch on the hamstrings. Now, I've mentioned before in previous videos, it needs to be this machine where there is a pad out in front of you, which is pressing down on your quads. This is what will keep your body fixed in position. It gives you something to press against. If it doesn't have this, then I would just skip this exercise completely. So it's very dependent upon what gym you are going to. The next exercise would be the Romanian deadlift. Now there's two variations of doing this and it's very dependent upon whether or not you are more glute dominant or hamstring dominant. When I do it, a lot of the time, I do notice that my glutes are a little bit dominant, but the way I perform this exercise is I do bend the knees a little bit more and I do push my hips back a little bit more. So the more you do this, the more glute activation there is going to be. So you really just have to be very careful with how you're executing this exercise. And if you want to get the most out of it in terms of the hamstring activation, then the straighter you keep your legs, the better it's going to be for you. And of course, Slight drawback of this exercise is the overall strength of your core. So if you do have a weak lower back, then you'll notice that your lower back will give away before your hamstrings do. So it's very important for you to build your core muscles, your lower back muscles and strength if you want to get the very most out of this exercise. The third one, which I would go for in terms of maximizing isolation on the hamstrings, probably just be the lying leg curl. 
I don't think this is as good as the seated leg curl, first of all, because the way that you are positioning yourself, you're not really getting that maximum lengthening of the hamstring. But also, you will notice that you're, well, a lot of people will lift their bum off the pad. It's definitely requires a lot more concentration and focus to keep your hips thrust into that pad and to maintain the tension on the hamstrings without it going onto your lower back. So in terms of just keeping your body fixed in position and maintaining the tension on the hamstrings, it's definitely a little bit harder to do this with lying leg curl compared to the seated leg curl. They would be my top three. Moving on to glutes. Now I have actually got four exercises which I would pick. So I tried to keep it in three, but I think there has to be four, which I mentioned. The first one, the split squat. Now you could argue this is also a very good exercise for building quads as well, but it's very dependent upon how you're setting yourself up. So if you want to maximize the tension on the glutes when you're doing this exercise, you want to lean forward more into it. Okay, so your back at the bottom of the movement should be at about 45 degrees. And also, if you think about foot placement, you don't want to bring your foot too far back or close to your torso the more that your knee moves out in front of your foot the more quad engagement there's going to be so you have to pay particular attention to how you're doing this you could either do this holding onto dumbbells but my absolute favorite is doing it on the smith machine because i don't have to worry about my balance all i have to worry about is just going up and down so it allows me to really generate more force with my glutes and therefore get bigger ass which is absolutely ideal Second exercise which I would do would be the hip thrust. Again, you can do this with a barbell, you can do it with Smith machine, you can even do it with some of these other machines which they're coming out with, but I think honestly the free weights are generally better, especially barbell. I mean, it just doesn't really get better than that. Third exercise I would go for would be the hyperextension slash reverse hyperextension. So most gyms do have a hyperextension bench and when you perform this exercise, the right way you can get very good activation of the glutes and maintain a lot of the tension on the glutes. Of course, you'll be hitting your hamstrings a little bit and your lower back a little bit, but it's very important when doing this is to just focus on your glutes moving you through point A to B, okay? The other variation of this would be the reverse hyperextension. This is very, very good exercise. A lot of people, I would say, don't really do this. It is very dependent upon the gym and whether you have this piece of equipment, but if you just focus on keeping your feet together at the beginning, lifting them behind you, spreading them at the top of the movement, and then squeezing your glutes as hard as you possibly can do. Again, this is an extremely good exercise. The fourth one would be some form of abduction movement. And there's quite a lot of good abduction machines out there, but this one in particular, which you can see on the screen, is a particularly naughty variation, which really hits the spot like no other. I don't know if it's just the way the machine is put together, but you're almost trying to spread your legs from high to low. So that is it. Thank you very much for watching. As always, if you want training programs that will get your body into absolutely immaculate condition, particularly when it comes to the summer season, walking on the beach, being by the pool, then I recommend you sign up to the Thirst app. It's pretty much the next best thing to having me as your coach. So what are you waiting for? Get involved and I look forward to seeing your transformations. Thanks for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.